Hi guys, so yeah, it's the long-awaited Dreamcast pickups because I looked at my videos the other day and I haven't actually done a Dreamcast pickup since I think last August, so over a year. So the intention was, because I'm not picking up too much, um, to kind of leave it for a while until I've got enough to show in a video. And then lo and behold, it's ended up that I've probably got too much for one video, so I'll probably chop this into two shorter videos because I don't want this to drag on too long. So we've got uh, some like repro stuff unreleased, um, some Japanese, some US, and some other bits and bobs, random stuff. So um, firstly, we're gonna go back ages and this guy who sent me these is gonna laugh because it was so long ago, it's ridiculous, and I, I just keep meaning to show them, but like I said, I've been saving everything up. And uh, I needed a few of the, of the Dreamcast Dream On demos, so I think there was, say, 22 of the demo discs that came out on the magazine. Um, I needed a fair few more, so Danny Kavanagh sent me a few, and I've got a stack here. Um, I can't remember which ones he sent me, but yeah, Danny Kavanagh, um, great guy, long time supporter of the channel. So we've got a note here, hey Pete, hope this finds you well. Sorry for the delay, maybe pass the spares on to somebody else, because I believe he's also sent me some that I already had. So yeah, um, I bought a bundle on eBay of uh, ones that I needed, and then basically Danny filled in the gaps and completed the set for me, so now I have every single demo released on the Dreamcast, the European demos to dream on. So that's awesome, thanks so much again Danny. Um, next we've got a repro one which is from Ben Boyd who as you know on Galaxy Sega does some really really good repro work. Now he custom designed this um, case. I'm actually probably, am I too far away from the camera so I might move the camera a little bit further towards me so that you guys can actually see the games properly. Okay there we go, a bit, a bit uh, nearer to the camera. So we've got um, this awesome custom designed Echo 2. Sentinels of the Universe. Now this was a cancelled game, never released for the Dreamcast, but a, uh, a beta or a prototype or whatever emerged online I think last year or very, very late, um, you know, very, very recently. Now he's done an amazing colour manual, it looks awesome, really, really cool um, custom artwork there. And where are we? And yeah, he doesn't do discs, Ben, so um, it's just the case and the manual, but really, really authentic looking PAL reproduction there. And Damo, who's uh, on Galaxy Sega, did me some awesome um, Echo 2 discs. Now, this is basically the beta of the game, which, like I said, you can play, but it's quite rough around the edges. And then uh, a little bonus disc, which is basically the Echo soundtrack off the Mega CDs, which you can kind of play while you're um, playing the game randomly. But yeah, pretty cool. Um, Damo also did me, as a little bonus, some uh, spare sleeves there. And another version of Echo there which is awesome. So yeah, two copies of that. And uh, yeah, really cool. I'll leave a link to Galaxy Sega where you can find Ben and Damo. And I'll also leave a link to Sega Mega Mods where um, Damo sells some of his repro stuff and that. So you can have a look there. Next one is another gift. Now this is awesome. It's a game that I've wanted for absolutely ages and it always goes for quite a few quid. So to be gifted this was, was really generous. And that is Egg Elemental Gimmick Gear. Now this came out in Japan and the US, but because it's kind of like a, an RPG, um, you, you want to play it in English obviously. So I wanted the US version, didn't come out in Europe. But the US version goes for a pretty penny, like I said. So Raz, Razmataz Raz, he gifted me this when I actually went to visit him in Sweden earlier this year because uh, he was getting rid of some of his Dreamcast stuff and he just wouldn't take any money for this. He insisted I have it. So thank you so much again, Raz. Again, link to Raz's channel in the description, guys. Top guy. Go and check him out. Um, right. Now we're wandering into I've forgotten where they come from territory now because it's been so long. I don't know where on earth half of this stuff came from, but I can pretty much guess on, on the majority of it. Now these first two I can tell you definitely popped up on eBay cheap, um, because in fact the 
the first one, I'm not sure if it did, uh, Sega Smash Pack. So it was either it was either Facebook or eBay, but it popped up around, I think it was a tenner or so. It can go for sort of 25, 30, I believe, on, on eBay. But yeah, Sega Smash Pack Volume 1, but it was the only volume that ever came out. They didn't do a Volume 2. And it's uh, US exclusive, and it's basically just Mega Drive games on a disc. So you've got a load of Mega Drive games, Sonic, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage 2, a load of good games. Um, but then you've got Virtua Cop 2 as well, which is um, obviously Saturn game. And then you've got Sega Swirl on there. So the only European version of Sega Swirl that came out is on a demo, one of the demo discs. Um, some people include it in the full set, but I wouldn't personally because it wasn't really an official release. Um, so this is the only real way you can get a proper disc of Sega Swirl, I guess. But yeah, um, the Mega Drive emulation isn't great. It's basically, um, yeah, you know, it's basically them running on an emulator. So it isn't great. I'd rather play them on the original Mega Drive, but it's still cool to have nonetheless. And this one was definitely eBay, I think. Um, Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. Again, US exclusive. And it's basically... Um, got various kind of types of um, Pac-Man on it so you've got like the the classic original arcade game uh, of Miss Pac-Man but then the the, the Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness is like a 3D if you can see the screenshots there it's like a 3D um, you know uh, top-down view um, of Pac-Man I haven't actually played that one yet okay um, we've got a couple of really really cool shooters Japanese exclusives. Now there's kind of a, like a small list of Japanese shooters that I really really want but I work my way through them so slowly because if you watch the channel a lot you know me I'd rather wait a couple of years and get it at a deal rather than just jump on eBay and pay the silly prices they're asking for these games. So these games can go mental um, prices but I got really good deals on them. Now this one I believe Ah, oh, do you know what? I was going to say this one was Facebook, but I think this one, I had a, a a discount voucher or some kind of code on eBay. You know, like sometimes you get sent the offers, and it and it meant that I got ten or twenty quid off this game. So it brought it down to like a really reasonable price under forty quid. Anyway, it's a uh, Chaos Field, which is one of the shoots that I've been after for a while. And it's, um, yeah, it's a really cool vertical shooter. I love my vertical shooters. And it's basically kind of like a, just a series of boss fights, um, really. But yeah, uh, for those that care, it's complete with spine card. Doesn't bother me at all either way, um, whether it has one or not. But yeah, really chuffed to get that finally. Um, if all goes well, I'll stick, um, you know, a little screen of gameplay of all these games up in the top corner so you can actually see roughly what they're like. Um, another one that I've been after for ages is actually on the bar top, although obviously the emulation's not bang on on there, but it's st still good fun. But this game's wicked. Now this was um, only released in Japan and America, and I did want the American version, but that goes for significantly more money than this, the Japanese version, and because it's a shooter it really doesn't matter, and that is Mars Matrix. Now. Actually, I want to say that Mars Matrix now was the one that I got the discount on and Chaos Field I bought on Facebook. Um, so yeah, it, I think it was. Um, so they're both really good prices. I, they were both around or under £40, which is really good for them. Um, the US version of Mars Matrix can do 100 quid easily, so it is much cheaper, the Japanese version. And it's got a uh, spine card again. Great looking kind of pink disc there with the, with the ships on, which looks awesome. And the case is cracked, but uh, you know, the beauty of the Japanese Dreamcast games and the US Dreamcast games, unlike the PAL, is the cases are easily replaced. It's just a dual case from, from any old CD. And this one was definitely Facebook, popped up very cheap. I think it was an auction, no one really bid on it, so I got it really cheap. And that is Centipede. So, I don't believe this came out in Japan, I think it's US exclusive, but it certainly didn't come out in Europe. 
Um, and I haven't played this, but it looks like a very, very odd 3D version of Centipede. So kind of like the Miss... <laughs> Whoops! Okay, so that case is actually um, completely smashed. It needs fixing, but yeah. It's, a, it's like a 3D version of Centipede, much like Miss Pac-Man was. And... Um, it's got the classic version of Centipede on there as well. Uh, but yeah, just one for the US exclusives uh, collection really. Um, this one was a couple of new indie releases. Now, you might have seen a video I did on this, it's Breakers for the Dreamcast. And that was released by um, Rush On Game, it was developed or ported by Josh Prod. And it's a uh, it's, uh, one-on-one fighter, it's actually really enjoyable, if you check out my video I did on it, um, playing it, it's really good. Um, yeah, so that was um, released alongside a few other games, but the other games were generally just ports of, or like basically PAL case versions of games that I've already got, like I think Alice's Mum's Rescue was in there and some others. But the only other game that actually was new in the lot, so I bought that as well, was this Rush Rush Rally Reloaded, which is a, a revamped version of Rush Rush Rally Racing, um, which is still sealed. I haven't actually tried it yet to see how it differs from the original, but that's cool. Um, this one, cheap eBay purchase, and that's Atari Anniversary. Again, US exclusive. Now, um, it's got 12 classic arcade games from Atari, obviously, so like Asteroid, Centipede, Missile Command, all that jazz. So yeah, haven't tried it yet, I'm not sure how well the emulation is on the Atari games there. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, this one is kind of related to a game, it's like an accessory that I've been after for ages. Now, I actually had one that I bought almost a year ago and it's just been sat here without me showing it to you. And then Dave, Retro Dave Nintendo, messaged me saying he's going to pick up some Dreamcast stuff and asking advice on the prices and stuff. And I said, oh, I'll actually be interested in this item if you're going to shift it. <coughs> so I ended up buying this off Dave. And I think I took the sleeve and the box and then I kept my old device, uh, the actual controller and put it inside so it's kind of a mishmash of two purchases and I sold the other one on. Anyway without waffling too much it's the uh, Konami pop and music controller so this is kind of a um, rhythm game so there's a series of I think four pop and music games on the Dreamcast and you basically like Parappa the Rapper or any other rhythm game you press in the buttons on the controller to go along with what's on screen, kind of like an early version of get how Guitar Hero works, the same principle. So really nice Nick, really chuffed to get that. Thanks for sorting me out Dave and getting me a nice box because my old box was a little bit sun faded so it's kind of gone like a really light pinky. So this is really great to have. And uh, to go with it I also picked up Pop and Music 3. I think that might have been from Alan on Facebook, Alan McCluskey. His Facebook group's called Alan's uh, Japanese Retro Game Sales or something like that. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. That was really, really cheap. And I've got one too, so I've got the first three now. It's just four to get. So that kind of goes with the controller. Right, this one, another really cool shooter. Um, kind of a twist on a shooter. And this popped up. Basically on Facebook, uh, someone was selling a load of shooters really cheap. So, basically I think there was Rainbow Cotton and this game, and I wanted both, and Peter Coombs on Galaxy Sega wanted both as well. So we kind of agreed to buy the pair for 100 quid and then split one each, basically. So I managed to get um, Twinkle Star Sprites for the Dreamcast. Again, Japanese exclusive. Um, no spy card, but not fussed. Uh, really nice looking disc, and it's cool. It's kind of like a two-player split-screen little shooter game. Kind of a cool little twist on the shooter, which is awesome. It's a really cool game, really chuffed to get it uh, in the collection. Now, we're nearly there, and then I'll probably do another video for some of the other stuff. 
so uh, this was, was this Facebook or, I think this was, speaking of Peter Coombs, I think I bought this off him ages ago. And it's a brand new sealed Sega Get Bass 2, so it's Bass Fishing 2, which came out in the US and the uh, and in Japan. So this is a Japanese version, brand new, obviously spine card and everything on there. It was under a tenner, I forget how much. Um, but yeah, one of the uh, one of the few fishing games that never came to the European market. And then finally, uh, probably one of the nicest in the bunch. I've had this for absolutely ages. It's probably more than a year I've had this. Sorry for the cut there, I had an absolutely massive coughing fit, so I got myself a nice cup of green tea. Lovely, so the last uh, item is one I've had for ages, a really cool item, it's an indie game, and it's Neo Zix, or Neo XYX, or however you say it. And yeah, it's a shooter from NG Dev Team. Now, NG Dev Team, as you may know, aren't making games for Dreamcast anymore. They're just sticking to Neo Geo due to piracy on the Dreamcast, which is a great shame. So if you're ever thinking of pirating or playing copied versions of the newer indie Dreamcast games, I suggest that you don't because it's just going to make developers stop making games for Dreamcast. So yeah, this is the limited edition one. It's got the soundtrack there. Um, on one disc and then it's got the game on another really gorgeous artwork it's really fun game vertical shooter it's um, you know it's not easy I'm not great at shooters anyway but it's gorgeous really cool game really chuffed to get that and it popped up on I believe on eBay a while back really really good price so that's um, most of the pickups from the last year guys for the Dreamcast collection and just to discuss something else really with you before I go, um, there will be a second part to this video anyway showing some pickups. But I'm considering culling the PAL Dreamcast Collection Shock Horror. So I've had the full set, the full PAL set for two years now. And um, you know, as many as, as many of you know and you kind of followed my series when I was going for the full set and everything. And it was kind of born from Back then I was collecting just so willy-nilly and you know when you start collecting I mean I've been on YouTube under three years um, collecting probably for about eight years properly now I think so when you start collecting and you, you just go mental and you buy everything and when I was first on YouTube I was buying a lot of stuff just whenever I saw stuff I'd buy it and I kind of needed a focus that I could put my energy into, like stop buying willy-nilly, just focus on this one thing. And that one thing was the PAL set because I thought it's really achievable, it's a relatively easy set to complete, which it was. And now, I mean in recent times I've culled a bit of Mega Drive and I've culled this and that and I, you know, I've got limited space, you guys know I've got limited space. I've got the game and really how I want it in terms of playing stuff. Um, got a couple of new home computers which I actually haven't actually shown you yet but I will do soon but got the game and really how I'm really happy with it and I just feel like a lot of the PAL Dreamcast stuff although I'm really happy to have completed the set and I do like having the full set I kind of feel like now the, the only filler that's in my whole collection is in the Dreamcast set because I've culled pretty much every other system and only keep games that I really really want to play except for the Dreamcast there's some stinkers in that set not too many you know compared to other systems certainly of that era like PS2 but I feel like the only filler is in the Dreamcast set and the only reason it's staying is because it's a whole set and I kind of feel like it's stupid to take up all that space just for that reason. So I'm seriously considering culling a lot of it. I kind of worked out on a spreadsheet roughly that I'd keep about 60 PAL games or so with a few maybes. So we'd be talking getting rid of about 150 games and it amounts to about three grand. Although, like I said, it's not really about the money, it's about the space and having them there. So. Um, like a lot of the games, the Samba set would probably go on. I never play that. I'd keep some of the box sets, like the House of the Dead, because of the gun and the, and the bass fishing. I like having the fishing rod. So a lot of games would would keep all the Capcom stuff, like um, Project Justice and Cannon Spike, the pricier ones. I'd definitely keep because I play them. But 
stuff like Moho and Evil Twin, which are pricey, I'm never going to play them realistically. If I want to play Evil Twin, I can pick it up for like three quid on the PlayStation, for God's sake. Um, so yeah, it's it's a thought. I'm considering doing it. So next time you see me, the the PAL set may have been cold. But yeah, we'll see what happens, guys. Anyway, uh, cheers. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on part two of the latest Dreamcast pickups. See you later.